I'm Sabrina. I was supposed to open this I'm video Sabrina up with today. Sabrina, but I'm Sabrina today. She just she just doesn't know. She just doesn't know how to do it like me and Calvin do. We it. are working on the S2000. We're dating now. I'm, I'm dating him. I'm together. Dating him. We're having sex. He's the girl. I'm the boy. Get out of here, Sabrina. I'm you today. I don't know how to do this. So you have to teach me how to do it. I'll be honest with you, Calvin. I'm really missing you today. I'm really missing you, buddy. We need the front bumper on the S2000 and the side skirts to be sent off to paint. But before we send them off to paint, they need to be sanded correctly and appropriately so that they yes, can they get do. painted. What? So today, how exactly do you, is it not gonna be black when it's done? Today's video is sponsored by Garage Amino. Since we've gotten the S2000, I've spent a lot of time on Garage Amino, connecting with people that have the same interest as I do with the S2000. I enjoy browsing the app because there's a lot of users on there who have a bunch of different interests. Whether any questions on what are the name of certain body kits, there's always a place in the app that I can find someone who knows that information. I've grown to really like the feature Avatar Chat because it's a way that I can instantly DM people using the chat and you can even do a FaceTime call or you can do a voice call to actually talk to someone rather than just DM them. The app is full of a bunch of users who have the same common passion in cars, which makes the platform a breeze to use. I encourage you guys to download the app from the links provided below, and I also suggest using Avatar Chat for yourself, because I think you'll find it makes the platform a lot easier to use. Once again, thank you to our sponsors. This is one of the problems that we need to figure out first. This was the molding line from when the bumper was created. It sits about one to two millimeters above the rest of the bumper, so we're gonna need to sand this down flush and then go to a finer grit and make it flush with everything else. The whole entire bumper needs to get sanded as well so the paint has something to stick on. Now this is something that I could get done at the paint shop, but to save money, we're just gonna do it here ourselves. And since Calvin has spent the past 10 years sanding his body kit, I assume that we had a pro in the shop anyways that if I need any questions, or if Sabrina had any questions, we could just ask him for some help. It's my goal today to teach Jay. Sabrina how to do, it's my goal today to, it's my goal today to, 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 I know, I wish you did. It's my goal today, why does that sound weird? Okay. It's TJ's goal today. It's my goal today to teach. <laughs> it's my goal today to teach Sabrina how to sand. I'm gonna teach Sabrina how to sand that front. Oh, I'm TJ now. It's, it's my goal today to teach Sabrina how to sand this bumper. <laughs> to make it look great. It's simple. You take 150 to take the rough off, and then you take 220 to get the more oh, rough wait. off. What are the numbers? The grits. The grits of this. Alright. As you go down, the lower the number of grit, the more coarse it is. So we're gonna go from 150, which is really coarse, to 400, which is relatively fine, right? Like, and then this bumper will be ready for, <laughs> we'll be prepped for paint today. So Sabrina, we're gonna be doing this in a back and forth action, not swirls, Movement. not horizontal, we're gonna go nice oh, back yeah. and forth. Oh, it's consistent movement. You key thing, okay, key thing is consistency. You gotta go slow to learn the movement. Because if you go like this, and you push that way, oh, you're gonna, yee, bye. Consistent movement, see? Just like that, baby. No. You're gonna be doing an action like this, Sabrina, and the purpose of it is we're trying to get down this fine ridge on the edge of the bumper. When you get it painted, you're not gonna want like uneven surfaces on the front bumper, right? Right. So our job today is to make sure that it is smooth. So when it's dropped off the paint, all they need to do is just spray it, let it cure, and then we pick it up. So when doing this, you're gonna wanna do a fine motion, and you can feel it too. You'll feel a noticeable difference on how much is being taken away. Okay. What's your question? How long is this gonna take? It's like um, this could take hours. We're kind of in a hurry, but like not oh, really in a okay. hurry. So, well, okay, if you... I missed it, so you can redeem yourself on that. And I see a big scrape. I thought that's what I wanted. I thought we were standing this. We're going away from the 150. We're actually starting at 220. Brina, what did you do? Wait, okay. Did yeah, you not see me getting just the edge? Well, I thought that we were like doing the entire bumper. No, like, not yet. Everything. We're just gonna focus on the edge for now. Oh, okay, okay. I understand now. Give okay, me that. So, Give also, me that. also make sure that the angle at which you do this is the same angle as right here, right? Because you want it to be the same. Like, if you do it like this, you're gonna sand off this beautiful edge. Which if I don't want to do. If you do it like this, you're just gonna leave a groove in there. Yeah. Ooh. What is my end goal to make that smooth straight down? Sand this down so that there's just a little a little baby edge, like on these other sides, you could see this little baby edge. 
You don't want it 100% gone. We want to get it just so there's just a little peep, and then we're gonna go to a, a finer grit and then sand it down all the way. Try and do some longer strokes. We just sprayed down the bumper with water so we can get a better look at how much work we've actually done. It's hard to get a real good idea when you're sanding so much and all that fiberglass is builds up on top of each other. So we sprayed it down to get a better look at where we are. Making pretty good progress so far. Because it's really rewarding. Because the way I see it is you're basically sculpting, right? One would argue it's not sculpting, but when it, when you reduce something to become something else, I would say it's sculpting. It, it's it's really rewarding to see, especially when you get a paint, it's really rewarding to see your work. There's only a few more spots that we need to get, but this thing's basically ready to go paint, dude. We still need to work on these edges on this side and on the other side. And I've recently noticed that the mold actually goes down the side of the bumper too, so you could see right here. I need to finish cleaning that up and it gets a little bit rough. That's actually pretty minimal. The, the real difficult part was, was these edges right here, which uh, I've been working on for the past 20 minutes and I've gotten quite a bit of it down. Now we just finished sanding the front bumper. Our last sanding coat we did was with 400 grit. Now it's time to pack up and get this off to paint. I cannot forget the side skirts that we have. These didn't need any sanding work at all. These are flawless. They'll obviously scuff this before they paint it, but no need for them to do anything more than that. We had some pitting issues on the edge corners, uh, like right here, you can almost see it. So we have some pitting issues. When I drop it off for paint, I'm probably gonna ask them to fill all the pits and do some additional work on them because I don't want that showing up once it's completely painted. But other than that, that turned out perfect. I just got to the collision center. I'm gonna go in there, ask if they will paint it because I don't know if they handle just insurance cases or if they'll do just like drop off bumpers and whatnot. Hopefully they'll accept it and hopefully they gave us a good turnaround date. Good news, they ended up taking the front bumper and the side skirt. When I first went in there, they were kind of hesitant because they like, I don't know, it was weird. They like, you could tell they didn't want to accept it and they were kind of weary about taking it, but I'm like, no, literally all I needed to do is just spray it the color and I will come pick it up when it's done. So they told me it'd be like a three day turnaround, which isn't too bad, but it is Monday night and you guys should know Monday nights are hockey nights. I'm gonna be setting up my new stick that I got that I showed you about a couple days ago. One of the main reasons I wanted a new stick is because this one that, now keep in mind, this stick was from like three, four years ago. It's like still, it's one of my old backup sticks that I've always had. It's way too short. When you're standing up barefoot, I like to have the stick be kind of riding under your nose. So what I'm gonna do is mark this new stick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this new stick kind of an inch higher than my old stick. And I'm gonna mark it here and then probably cut it at the ring. I have one of my buddies bringing a hacksaw for me. And while we're here, I'm gonna tape up the blade on this one. I'm pretty particular with how I tape up my blades. I like to go all the way to the toe and then use the scissors and cut around it. It's kind of unnecessary, but it's something I've been doing since I was like 14. You can tell a lot about a player by the craftsmanship of a tape job. This is where you have to know what you're doing. All right, so once you've taped your toe, pinch off the seam so you get a good nice seal around that. And then you take some scissors. It's better to use like smaller scissors, but all I have are these kitchen scissors. And then you trim right up against the blade. And as you cut it, it like seals the tape around the toe. Ooh! And that right there, boys, is how you trim a blade. Out with the old, in with the new. 
next time I come to one of these games, I'm gonna make a sign, and I'm gonna hold it right there, and it's gonna say, go teach, in big letters. I'm gonna do a cheer, and be his own personal cheerleader, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, baby, you get in on that action. Come on, Teej. Come on, there you go. Come on, TJ, this is what we trained for. Put it in the net. <gasps> yeah! Uh-oh, uh-oh, yeah! uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh oh, uh oh. Boys, come on. It's in, it's in. Come on, boys, let's not get aggressive. Uh oh, TJ's getting yelled at right now by the ref. <laughs> There's Tej. Get into a little altercation. Yeah, that's right, be the bigger man. Hey, he, he scored a shot. Look, look, it's in there. Oh, I think the red players are a bunch of weenies. <gasps> Coming to you live with another update. The score is now. Seven to three. It was just six to three, but got it in again. So you know we're really we're really putting up a fight out there. Uh, but it's just not seeming to be enough tonight. Today, standing that bumper, kind of dirty. TJ didn't really tell me it was gonna be that dirty, but kind of fun, kind of eh for maybe like my third mod ever in my life. And technically, it wasn't even a mod; it was a prep for a mod. So oh. to be continued on Sabrina modding her S2K. Wow, that guy just smacked into the wall. But um, anyways, thank you. So so very much for watching. We will see you tomorrow. Oh, there was drama, but there's not. Peace out and keep moving forward. And I'm feeling